This week, we talk about female masturbation. So is there a right way and a wrong way for women to masturbate? Should women masturbate? Uh, do they have the same kinds of problems that we talked about last week with men with addiction to porn and stuff like that? These are all valid questions. It would be very, very difficult, even in a, a huge population of men, even with millions of men, to find any that never masturbated and didn't masturbate when they were children, whereas there are quite a few women who never masturbate, who didn't masturbate as children and still never do it. Maybe they tried it once and they were like, meh, it's not for me. Uh, that is very, very rare among men, obviously. So why, why is this difference there? I don't have a good scientific answer, but it may have something to do with society and the way women are brought up and what we think is right and wrong and how we feel about our bodies and ourselves. Now, if you happen to be a woman who uh, never masturbates, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not trying to make a bad and wrong. In fact, on the entire topic of masturbation, I think it's safe to say as a baseline that there's no right and wrong. There's no wrong way to masturbate. But it is worth considering the things that you do in your life, everything from how you conduct your career to uh, the food that you eat, uh, and all the way to your sexual habits, your masturbatory habits, and consider, is this serving the life that I want to have? Is this serving uh, the way I want my life to work? And can the way that I masturbate affect my love life and my, my sex life? So uh, one of the things to consider is that women who never masturbate and didn't masturbate as children frequently have more difficulty having an orgasm with their lovers. And that is something to consider. So if you're a woman that doesn't masturbate and you're a woman who has difficulty achieving orgasm with your lover, then you may want to start experimenting with self-pleasure. Now, if you've got a great sex life with your lover and uh, you orgasm regularly and you're both satisfied, this obviously doesn't apply to you. However, uh, if you feel some shame around your sexuality or if you have difficulty getting pleasure from intercourse or from sex, then you might consider uh, becoming more familiar with your own body and using that as a vehicle to uh, erase shame and just become more familiar with yourself. Probably the highest leverage point in adjusting the way you masturbate or in learning uh, how to touch yourself and how to pleasure yourself is to not be too goal-oriented, not to be in too much of a hurry. For a lot of women, I think that um, the entire act of self-pleasure has been reduced to a race to the fastest orgasm so that I can get some stress relief and feel better and go on with my day and not feel sexually frustrated. And for a lot of men, that's true too. And I think you're cheating yourself of an enormous amount of pleasure, but you're also cheating your future lover out of a certain amount of pleasure because sex and lovemaking can also begin to pick up that character that you developed as a habit during self-pleasure which is that habit of rushing to orgasm. And then things get frustrating because you're, you're very goal-oriented. And the more goal-oriented you are when you're making love, the less likely you are to actually have a satisfying sex life. So if you want to start to become more sensitized to yourself and your body and the things that you like and the things that give you pleasure, consider not rushing to orgasm, but just uh, allowing yourself to be in a state of sensuality and self-pleasure and just figuring out what feels good and doing that for a long time. It doesn't always have to be about orgasm. And then the ultimate extension of that, and I think where women run into trouble uh, with masturbation in a way that can seriously adverse, adversely affect their sex life, is vibrator addiction. Vibrator addiction is kind of the analog, the uh, similar thing that women have to uh, men's porn addiction. And what ends up happening for women who become addicted to vibrators is that it becomes extremely difficult for them to have an orgasm with their partner unless their partner brings a vibrator to bed. The bottom line is women begin using vibrators because it is the fastest, easiest way to have a powerful orgasm. Within seconds, women can take uh, one of these Hitachi magic wands and vibrate at 9,000 cycles per second, something that no human could ever do for you. Uh, yourself or your lover, and they can very, very quickly bring themselves to orgasm and go, oh, that was fun, and, and they're kind of done with their day. So it's kind of instant pleasure. And so I understand uh, the seduction of that. And there are plenty of women uh, who manage to have a pleasurable relationship with their vibrator and also a pleasurable relationship with their man. But like, like with a man who is constantly masturbating with pornography, not being able to then uh, ejaculate when they're with a real woman because they're used to a certain way of reaching stimulation. They have this neurological process that's been mapped and mapped and mapped and dug over and over again so that now this is the only way that they can 
ejaculate, it's exactly the same for women. If you're constantly using a vibrator and you're using it frequently and you've used it for a long period of time while you were single, and particularly if it's the first way you ever had an orgasm, you can easily uh, over-sensitize yourself uh, to the point where you're desensitized, where your clitoris is desensitized, and it becomes extremely difficult for you to reach orgasm in any other way. Fortunately, there is a simple, or not so simple, depending on how, how you want to think about it, solution to this, which is ban the, uh, ban the magic wand. You need to stop using the vibrator for some period of time. And again, not a problem for every woman, but if this is occurring to you as a problem, uh, the best thing for you to do is to stop using a vibrator altogether and begin doing it the old-fashioned way with uh, your fingers and maybe a little bit of coconut oil or lube and uh, going back to the basics and learning how to find pleasure that way. This can be a frustrating process. You may find that it takes months before you're able to reach orgasm that way, but you will over time. The final thing that I think is worth talking about is that pornography is affecting women too. It's much less common, and I'm not really sure again why that is, why uh, pornography seems to be so much more addictive to men than it is to women. But the truth is there are a lot of women who are still being affected by pornography, whether they're addicted or whether they just have an unhealthy obsession with it. For a lot of women, uh, the viewing of pornography affects the way they think sex ought to be. And as with men, this is particularly true for younger women, uh, women below 35, or particularly women in their 20s, who grew up with computer porn being regularly available. And their first sexual experience, the first experience of what was a turn on, instead of being you know, some uh, uh, Disney princess being swept away by the charming prince and then having these kind of feelings that they didn't quite understand. Instead of that, they're actually, you know, maybe uh, at a very, very young age being exposed to full-on hardcore sexual images. And the, the issue there is that you can begin to believe, and there's no reason you shouldn't believe, that that's what sex and love making ought to look like. And that can either scare a woman away or it can become appealing to her. But she thinks that's the way it's supposed to be done. The next obvious danger, in case you haven't leapt ahead to this yet, is that when a young man who grew up on pornography meets a young woman who grew up on pornography and they get together, they are, of course, doomed forever to think that that's the way lovemaking ought to look. And that's going to be their sex life. Their, their uh, default sex life is going to be this constant imitation of images that they saw in pornography, which is a, a very, very small uh, piece of the vocabulary of lovemaking. Lovemaking involves so much more than you'll ever see in pornography. So many other uh, possible ways of being, so many other possible ways of touching, and so many other possible ways of actually having intercourse that are completely left out from, uh, from the act of pornography. And, and they are cheating themselves and unfortunately missing out on a whole lot. So uh, if you're a woman who was imprinted that way on pornography, uh, I really recommend that you at least give some thought to the possible ways that you could have pleasure in a, um, uh, a more emotionally rich environment. This is Alex Holm with Revolutionary Sex, uh, wishing you a, uh, a great sex life with your partner and a great, rich, and satisfying uh, sex life all by yourself.